so the next project we're going to do is deck project and we have a, more than half of you that already worked on deck project so whether you're construction architectural civil or transportation you will be working on your own deck you will be working on your parents deck and maybe you're helping out summertime during construction so everybody will be exposed to it one way or the other and it's a cute little project one question right away that I'd like to answer in case I forget you have a very minimalist project feel free to make the deck bigger I don't mind if you design your own deck as well for your own house feel free to study more details I love when students impress me so if you want to make plans for next summer surprise your parents by designing addition maybe to their deck or redesigning their all uh, falling apart deck feel free to explore further if you want to if you want to design sitting benches if you want to design um, a bigger layout so you could actually show tables etc then feel free to do it however if you are going to do bigger deck you will need a bigger sheet so we're going to make a note that the project as is in your in your book it is laid down so you could project information from plan to elevation and it fits A3 beautifully. And for your portfolio, you could fold it in half so the title block shows and you would just slide it into the sleeve. So we're going to make a note that it is page, page uh, 36 and it is A2. What did I say an instruction for scale? I believe it's half inch scale. So if you came from high school and you've worked with uh, imperial, uh, sorry, metric scale, for some of you, this metric scale is going to be a shock. Most of the residential construction is done in, met in imperial, so you have to be fluent. So I believe, yes? I wrote A2, thank you. I love it, you're paying attention, that's fantastic, thank you. A3, but feel free to use A2 if you want to have more room or a little bit more um, opportunity to add to it like planter boxes maybe outside of the railing you're going to have a big planter box that's going to have droopy flowers and feel free to have fun with it maybe you design the roof and the gazebo on your deck have fun with it okay so a3 so a2 can be divided into two sheets today we already know how to do it the the biggest issue here that we uh, need to address is first of all you got to visualize what you're drawing so let's have a look at our drawing and we did mention that it's a sliding door sliding door is on the wall and on both sides of that window you could actually show slightly thicker slightly bigger wall the the deck boards are, are I believe either six I think there are six inch boards and they are laid on a 45 degree angle pattern then what you see, the thickest lines, is the, uh, the, the deck um, railing finish, which is one by six, almost like a, a rounded board, which you can purchase for uh, fencing. So there's all kinds of lumber in your lumber yards, and this one is nicely rounded, one by six, about this size, so you can lean on it, you can put your uh, cup of coffee or a cold beer summertime, okay? So it's a ledge board that you see at the top and it's cut on 45 angle at, at edges. Now right below it, you see a four by four post that actually goes all the way through the structure to the ground and then it's embedded in some or two below the frost line. So we have three posts. We have um, so many deck boards and so many spindles. So the little squares that you see under the finish ledge board are one and a half by one and a half vertical posts and those posts have to have minimum four inches in between so it's a actually standard there is a reason why most of our um, decks in Ontario have very similar railings and you can actually buy those rails already pre-manufactured with a little cut at the end I'm sure you've seen them and they come with two different heights. One is for balconies. In Ontario, per building code, your balcony has to have, I'm pretty sure it's 36 inches, but you can have a few are uh, lower than um, five feet, I believe. 
we would have to check this, but balconies on the second story have higher railings and the decks on the lower level have lower railings. If you were within 24 inches, which I believe we are, I think I gave you an option of going with rail or not, but within 24 inches, if you're just a little bit less than 24 inches, you could have a deck without railing in Ontario. Now, the big problem with uh, um, slightly boring designs for railings is that we have also a very smart regulations with regards to safety. So those spindles are four inches between because we don't want any baby to fall through. And it has been proven that if you have spindles less, uh, more than four inches, the child's head can go through. And if it goes through, then the whole body can go through. And worse, I don't want you to picture this, but the, if the head goes through and everything else doesn't, uh, there have been deaths of very small uh, children and very small animals too. They could get hurt. So we have this very strict building code requirement for no railing to be having spaces bigger than four inches. So you see some elaborate metal designs. Um, metal designs then have a problem with climbability, which is another area where if you have a little child who loves to climb and you have a very beautiful, very busy layout, but the child can put a foot on that design and climb up, we have a problem again. So that's why you see these boring vertical spindles at four inches apart. But it all makes sense, better be safe. So you're going to be learning much more in your residential course with me in third semester. Uh, and then there's the actual building code course. So this is all come. This is just so you have a little bit of intro. So you are now the designer. Where would you do drawing like this? What do you think? For yourself, you already know. For yourself, to know what you need to buy and how you want to build it, how to design it. Where else do you think you could draw it in the future? Did anybody thought about going into business of a landscape design? Have you been mowing grass? Yes? Awesome. So if you're already thinking that that would be a great thing to do, that's what you want to be able to do for your customers. You don't want to just build them. You want to come in with your Revit design and you want to just impress them with the layout down 3D, observing it from different angles, different patterns, different colors, finishes. So you're pocketing the money for construction, but this is an add-on tool that would not only give you uh, more customers, but uh, it would allow you to have more fun with your estimating and calculations and impressing. Uh, the customers. So, okay, so that's uh, one area. Second area will be all residential builders need to provide drawings if they're, if they're building decks in front of the new houses. Um, more importantly, you will be probably doing it for yourself. Okay, so we're going to draw the plan. We're going to draw, basically you have, uh, so I'll, I'll try to give you a quick heads up. You have the window which is, there's some dimensions you may want to add. Standard window for our typical construction, if you show it four inches, we're doing great. Now, you would have a frame, which, which would be probably two by four, kind of like standard two by four. So that's all you need to show for frame on both sides of that window. But this window is actually part of the sliding, one panel is sliding. Um, you could probably improve to what I gave you there. You would draw two lines for two uh, glass panels. And this one actually is the panel that moves. So you could potentially improve on what I gave you yeah. by showing a panel that actually slides. Yeah, I did that? Oh, okay, so I must have fixed that. So that's our sliding door that takes us to the deck. Uh, the wall that I mentioned, you can guys listen to me later. This is not on a drawing and you're welcome to add it. Let's say eight inch wall and you could, you now know how to hatch. You could do something like this. We often show a cut line when we cut something off. So the deck itself needs to be constructed now. What I would suggest is remember our 45, how do we draw 45 line? We'll take our 45 cent square. I would suggest that you start from drawing a center line which actually center line, it's properly drafted dash dot, dash dot line, okay? But once you have this construction line, 
then you can offset everything from it. And there'll be lines that will be now, your deck is actually, I drew the wall, I gave you wall on 45, so your deck can be vertical and horizontal. So you need to come back and place construction lines to create this triangular shape and at certain dimensions the, the deck actually is not hitting the wall at small angle again. Remember the 94 curves? Well, this is the same thing. You want to draw all the light construction lines first, locate the stairs where they are, measure, draw all kinds of construction lines before you actually fill in all the details. And the last but not least on that plan, you're going to draw your 45 um, six inch offset floorboards and then all the details that go into below. So I'm going to leave it at that because I think you've got a little bit more understanding now with the plan. The bigger problem here is the elevation. And to start elevation and in the future you will be drawing elevations for whole buildings. The first thing you want to do is go not all the way down to your sheet, because we're going to do title block today, professionally, right? This is your project, open project. But somewhere where you would like to start your uh, building your deck up, I suggest draw a nice line that would be the ground line. And then you have ground line, ground, I'll show you something. Assuming that I don't have to move this ground line, the ground line on drawings is actually a very dark line, so you want to press hard. And then there's a standard hatching where you take 45 triangle, and you go three, four lines in 45. I'll show you guys behind me in a moment. I'll move to this direction. And then we go in the other direction, one, two, about three millimeters apart. You guessed it, three millimeters. Everything is three millimeters. So we kind of draw these uh, lines that imply soil. And then you have things happening. There is, I run out of room, but feel free to go three feet deep if you have more room. And sonotube for this kind of project could be 10, 10 inches diameter. So the actual post is, is, there's two ways of doing it. We place a sonotube in soil, and a good person that can dig very well can actually dig this hole a little bit bigger at the bottom. My head guys do this, don't ask me how. Somehow put the shovel in and make kind of like a bell. And then you can throw in stones in there. Then you put a cardboard sauna tube. And you fill this out with concrete. And it is placed at about six to eight inches above the ground. So your post, the not so great construction, you stick the post right into concrete before it sets. But then when it goes rotten, uh, wood and concrete are not a good combination because moisture will eventually rot the wood. So the, proper con the better construction is there are these saddles. And if you go next time to Home Depot, you can have a look. There are these saddles that look like this. And those of you who built those decks before, you know. They have an anchor ball. Uh, they have an anchor that goes into the concrete. And then you place that saddle. It's got a hole. You, you put a nice nut and bolt. And your post now can be changed should it ever need to. And there is a separator because this is galvanized galvanized metal that will separate now your wood from the concrete. So feel free to add this and uh, the hatching for concrete is little triangles, like I do grouping, triangle, few bubbles, bigger bubbles, smaller bubbles, here and there, and then dot, dot, dot. So I like this part because when I, I know you're finishing your project when you're going this kind of hatching. When I do click, 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 that will be your concrete. And this, in elevation view, would happen here. Hopefully, if you plan your sheet better, it might fit nicely. For that reason, if you have room, maybe your title block, again, could be on the right side of the sheet and not the bottom. Our sheet, ladies and gentlemen, notice my handout, 8.5 by 11, is vertical. Your A3 will be something like this. So you can do title block this or this. This is not a standard way of doing projects. Okay, gentlemen, you with us? This is not a standard way of doing any drafted drawings. Construction drawings are usually landscape, because our boards are landscape. But this is, uh, this is quite acceptable for architectural renderings and presentations. But for this project, I changed the layout because I want you to 
bring information from plan to elevation, okay? So we're going to actually place this A3 sheet vertically on your board and start somewhat here. Allow, allow as much room as possible for the bottom part because then you can fit this beautiful anchor detail. Okay, so the, the most important lesson here is that once you start with this construction line, see how much you need for height. I gave you a few heights in there. And I would suggest that draw these lines. So you have a top of the concrete pier. You have offset of steps, three steps times eight inches will give you, let's say, 24. So in scale, what scale did we say? I think it is half inch scale. So we haven't actually done an imperial project yet. So this is first time for those of you who suffered with those uh, scale assignments at the beginning. Today is you have to go back, establish the accuracy of the scale, and look at remembering um, how it works from the first week. And reminder that you measure from zero full feet, and then on the left-hand side you actually add the inches and fractions of an inch. So um, if um, I think that you have to start with getting comfortable with that scale, and then things will go smoothly. So um, offset all the height. So we have steps. We have um, we have the top of the deck, and then we have railings top of the deck and then we have railings. So I don't have lots of room here, but what I want you to understand is start with these horizontal heights. If you're not having enough room in here for dimensions, etc., all of this needs to come down. So don't spend time doing these hatchings for soil until you establish what we were learning up till now as layout. So when you were asking me, well, how much room, how much room here and there? Layout is your job. So we're going to lay it out, and if it means that you can't show this detail, that's fine. If you're really particular and you really want to have it, maybe make room somewhere else for just this detail, and again, you would have a light line, cut line, and basically show it as a detail. And this, uh, you would basically have to have this uh, dimension shown as four feet, zero inches minimum below the frost line. Okay, so the next step, and I'm using this green hoping that some of it will show on our video because I don't have other colors today. Once you have horizontal lines, this is what is the most important exercise for us today. Now we want to project stuff that you've already measured and create elevation from it. So the heights you have to take from dimensions given on drawing. But everything else, location <coughs> of the first step is right here. Location of the second step is right here. Third step, this step, the post, this corner, this door. Okay? So your drawing will become here first a mesh of construction lines. And eventually you're going to get a little bit too confused. So this is why once you know, once you know that you have room for everything, then start with something that will anchor you, and I would say the ground line, definite ground line, will be a good anchor. And then just to give yourself a little bit more, again, understanding to where things actually are happening, maybe you will actually start outlining the first step, and then go another eight inch and another eight inch. So whichever way you need to go to, to get a good understanding of which line is what and what you're projecting, always check and double check. And then at the very end, when you have everything constructed, uh, I will look at the detail um, in elevation view and tell you a little bit more. Maybe could I, could I see that page? Just so I can talk a little bit more about what is it that is showing in elevation view. Thank you very much. So in elevation view, we are actually uh, looking at elevation note, which is A. That's how we show elevation view. Uh, it, the stairs, the stairs are shown almost like in section view. In real life, they would be drafted lighter because you would have the stringer covering them up. So that's actually my AutoCAD boo The correct drawing, I'm not going to take points off. Anything that I've printed wrong, you're welcome to draft wrong, but I want you to have better project. I kind of mixed section and elevation here when I added that little stair component. So the stairs have a stringer, and you can purchase a stringer that already has carved out 
um, like indentation where you can just um, anchor your treads into it. That gives it a really nice support so you don't depend on just screws and angles. So there is a standard stringer, which is 12 inches, and the steer is laid out within that stringer, and there is vertical piece and horizontal piece of lumber. <coughs> they are, they're having a one inch nosing. Stairs are comfortable when we have a little bit of a nosing. And then uh, what you see is the structure that would cover up the floor, um, usually two by eight lumber behind. So you would have two pressure treated lumber and there would be some kind of fascia board that would bas basically cover up all the attachments and, and things that are maybe not so pretty. Fascia board that you see at the bottom that covers up the whole floor construction could also be a nice looking cedar, it could be painted some fancy color, where everything else below are two by eights at 16 inch centers would be the standard floor construction would not be visible at this point. So that's the thick fascia board. Then we have a four inch offset before horizontal member starts for the railing. So what you see between the two posts that are starting from footings and go right through the whole construction all the way to the top bar ledge, we have the first uh, two by four. So what you're looking at in elevation view, so the stairs could be drafted much lighter, but what you're looking at elevation view with regards to railing, you already know why we have them four inch verticals. But the other thing that you should understand is the basic construction of the, of the railing. So your railing detail as shown here is two by four between in plan, it is shown flush to the inside. So this is the top beer ledge, okay? This is two by four that's running horizontally. And on the floor, we have four inch for the same reason as spindles. So no kid can fall through. And then spindles are usually pre-cut. This is what you see in the store. So in elevation, in section view, you would see this. And behind, further back, lightly would be the actual post that goes down. Do you see it? This is in section view. It's in section view a spindle that's made out of wood. It usually has this kind of shape. It is two by four, so this is your two by four, standard lumber. And the top is finished with a nice, and that's probably rounded, nice ledge board. And this spins between <coughs> the posts so you can sweep the floor. So anything accumulating here can be easily cleaned up. In third semester now my students are doing residential projects and you wouldn't believe how many of them are giving me railing that has line like this and spindles like this. This is what I'm getting in third semester. Not you because you already know it in first semester, okay? So this is a pretty lousy looking uh, railing. This is the railing that I want to see from you in third semester. The spindles can be iron, but they will be having another iron piece. They will have some kind of finish board, and they will be raised, and maybe there will be some other one. Now, you could change the post. Feel free to give me some fancy design for the post. My post is cut off. That's how that deck was built. The ledge board is flush all the way around. But very commonly, the posts are elongated, and they have all kinds of designs. There is, uh, there is uh, like hip kind of tops. I covered all my tops with uh, little domes made out of copper, or at least they were sold to me as copper. They're not turning green, they're, they're going funny color, so I think that it was a little bit of cheating there. But there is the bowls, bowl finishes, there's all kinds of finishes. And then feel free, feel free to say, okay, um, maybe somewhere here, where would we do this? You could have another board attached, and then you could show a simple construction of the flower box, and feel free to, to go crazy with your design. Okay? So that's what you're looking at. What's not shown in elevation view is actual wall and the door. That would make it a little bit more complicated. And ultimately, in project like this, the existing door does not really matter. In plan, it's important how it ties to, to the deck plan, 
but in elevation view, you get a tall shell contactor what to build. The other thing that you should probably know is that this probably would not be sitting the way you see it out of out in open space. We would have this construction, this holds it to the soil, this holds the material here, but along the wall you would have a ledger board probably again two by eight, two by twelve, depending on the size of the deck. And that would have to be attached to our wood or masonry structure, so this can also be tied to the house. But that's all below the deck. We're not making it a tremendously huge project, and I'm not making it due again at the end of the class, because you're doing much better work if you're more relaxed. But don't waste the time. Do as much as you can, because we need to see this done by next week. Okay? There is a night class here today at 6. But I think the gentleman that has the class, he only has few students, and he probably doesn't mind if you stay. So if you, if you need extra little bit of time to finish, I would suggest finish because you probably have a hard time getting back to it at home, correct? Now, after this project, next week, ladies and gentlemen, do not miss next week. Because what I will do is I will talk much longer time about final project. I have recording from last year but it's me talking to the computer screen and what you already have in the book. It's quite long if you want to get started, if you have time, you want to get it over with, you could listen to the last years. But, uh, but I will um, go over everything. I'll introduce the project so we won't have lots of time next week to actually get lots done. And uh, so it is important, first of all, that you're hearing it, you don't miss it. If you do miss it, make sure you listen to it. And then we will only have three classes. I will not make it due for you on Monday of the last week. I will give you till Thursday when I have class here. That will give you a little bit of extra time. I will make it a little bit more fair, okay? So my last drafting class, which is noted in our calendar, is when we will have due. Now, having said that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to finish with the recording. Let's talk a little bit about falling behind and uh, ending in late work, late work, okay? Thank you.